Hi, this is John with the, the Sphere Group. In this video, I'm going to explain how you can save your spectrum to a data file uh, using the Spectrometer with Cal GNU Radio program. We're going to start by looking at the canvas that appears in the GNU Radio with the Spectrometer with Cal program. Before you run the program, you want to make sure that your prefix is properly set, and that is showing the path name for the files where your data is going to be saved. So if I double click that to open it, you can see that the value, there's quotes here. I've cleared out any previous path name that was there, and for this, uh, we want to fill in, in between the quotes, the proper path name. So to do this, th the best way I've found is to use the file navigator on the computer to make sure that the syntax is exactly right for where your file is, is going to be saved. So I've created, opening my navigator, I've created a folder called Horn Data July 2020. Notice there are no spaces. The program does not like spaces in file names or in text. So I use underscores. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, open the properties of it. And notice it has under here parent folder, and then it has the name at the top. So I'm going to double click or triple click on this parent folder, and I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to go back to the GNU Radio variable box, and I'm going to paste the, that prefix in there. And then what I want to do now is put the file, the folder name, the rest of the folder name in there. So I'm going to go back to my navigator, and I'm going to just triple click the name and copy it over to here. I have to put a slash after that parent folder path name. Then I can paste in the data folder name that I'm going to use. And then I have to add a slash at the end because it's a folder and the files are going to get written there and what comes after that is actually the file name. All right, so we're set and we should be all set to go. Notice I have my integration one time set at two seconds and my integration two is set at 10 seconds and I'm going to just leave those as they are. We're going to go ahead and run the program and you can see, because it's at two seconds, it's going to take a few seconds for that first integration to get completed. Okay, and there's our, our spectrum. Looks like we might have a little bit of hydrogen here. Okay, I could even zoom in a little bit if I'm really interested, and so on. So, <coughs> you can see that there's actually two different options we have for saving the data. One of them is write to CSV file. Uh, and you have not writing the file, which it's currently doing, or writing the file. And then the other option is capture current spectrum. I'm going to actually start with that one. If I click on it, and then I open up my, oh, let's close this out, and then let's double click and open up the folder. You can see that there is a file written there, okay? and. It's 11.37 a.m., and that's when it wrote it. The syntax here, or the format, I should say, is the date. It's July 20th, 11.37 a.m. And then these last three parameters are values that are in a text box that you're going to fill in, in on the screen. So right now it's any town zero, 00, and what those correspond to are these three text boxes. Any town, uh, type in wherever you want. You could type in, oh, my backyard. You could type in whatever you want. I'm going to say, suppose we did this in New York City. Uh, suppose my telescope is pointed at an azimuth of 137 degrees. After I type in the value, I have to hit enter. If I don't, it's not going to get recorded. And it won't show up in the file name. Elevation, uh, suppose I have it pointed at 52 degrees, I hit enter. I'm not positive I remember clicking enter after I typed New York City, so I'm just going to go back there and hit enter at the end of it. Okay, now if I capture the data and then go over to my 
folder here, you can see that sure enough, it printed the file with the date, the time, it has New York City, it has the azimuth and elevation I typed in, and notice what it did with the New York City. There's no space between New York and city. So uh, it doesn't like spaces and it got rid of them for us, and that's, that's fine. These boxes, you can put in anything you want. The only consequence they have is it will show up in the name of the file. And that's very useful. It can help you remember you know, where you're appointed and so on. The other right to file option we have is this box up here where I can write to files uh, by clicking on it. It will continuously write every time an integ integration is completed. So right now I have it on short integration. So that means every two seconds, it will write a file to that uh, folder. Right now, I'm seeing 11.39 a.m. I'm going to go ahead and click Writing to File. Let's go over to our folder and see what happens. Okay, sure enough, 11.39, 44.9 it wrote, and then 11.39.46.9, 48.9, 50.9, and so on. So you can see it is writing every two seconds. Okay, let's stop writing to file. If I switch to my long integration and start writing to file, uh, let's see what that does. Okay, 11.40.08, 11.40.18, I bet you the next one's going to be 11.40.28. And sure enough, it is. So that's how that works. I'm going to stop writing the file. So you've, you've gotten your files. Um, and what I want to quickly show you is the easiest way you can view this is if you take one of these and you double click it, it's going to automatically try to open in a spreadsheet. I'm using OpenOffice. You might have Excel or something. I'm going to hit, go, hit OK. It's just opening it because it's a text file, and you can see that it has the data here. The data consists of two columns of 4,096 data points. The first column is the frequency in megahertz, and the second column is the signal. The zeros that appear in the signal column in the beginning and end of the file are results of the uh, filtering that is done and can be ignored. If I highlight those columns and insert chart, I want XY scatter. I'm going to do smooth lines and hit finish and boom. Sure enough, you can see that we have our spectrum. And then you could scale it, name your axes and so on and do whatever you want to do with that. Good luck with your radio astronomy with the Horn Telescope.